Today we're going to be taking a look at Mitch's project, um, <clears throat> a senior who I'd like to push forward here to get this done for. Um, Mitch, in looking at what you've done so far, I went ahead and I solidified some of our, our labeling here. So we have the front right, back right, front left, back left there, and the arrows are all pointed in the middle. So we shouldn't see any mortises on any of the sides here because all going to be exteriors of the legs, right? <clears throat> When you're making mortises on here, you're going to do yourself a tremendous favor if all of your mortises are the same length. You can see right here that number one and number two mortises are not the same length. Do you see that? How they're different? And then if I pulled over the side there, now that is the same length, three. So there's all kinds of... Uh, discrepancies to, to, to how this is laid out. <clears throat> so <clears throat> if they were all exactly the same, I would go over to the table saw and I would, well, let me show you. I would take the, the side apron here to your, t to your table. I would go to the table saw and I had already started thinking about doing this. So I got a larger fence on here, the back side of the, of the, of the saw. And I would just use my fence. This is something that we've seen us do before in class. I would set it up to your shoulder there. And I would go ahead and set my height. And I would make that cut, flip it, make that cut, spin it, make that cut, and make that cut. And that's if they were all even in from the edges. So that's a consideration that you want to think about when you're making this thing. If you have all different size tenons and all different size mortises, it's not that it can't be done. It's just that for us to set it up on here and get the blade height set for each cut there, we'll be shifting our fence around a lot to be able to see what height the blade has to be set to. So we're raising and lowering our blade very often and moving the fence. And in doing all of that, there's a lot of room for human error. So instead, I'm gonna do this cutting by hand. So we're gonna go back over to the, to the workbench. And I'm gonna cut these shoulders by hand. And I'll cut the, the uh, sides of the tenons also by hand. So I'm gonna lay this out like this. And clamp it to my work table so that it's extending out the side and it's solid on there, well on the, on the board there. So what that does for me, it gives me the shoulder here as a guideline so that I can hold it against just how we've done with flush cutting. Flush cut that edge there and it should be staying nice and square and even with that. And then I go up until my line. Okay? So you can see what I've cut. The other thing is that this side is not going to be the side that we're looking at here. Well, the way these aprons go in here, they go in so that this side's back. So I just don't want to booger up this edge here with my saw because that's the, that's the edge that's going to be coming in contact with the leg and that's the edge that you're going to see. So if it gets boogered up by the saw, it's, it's going to be noticeable. This back side, not so much. Okay, So I'm going to make these next cuts as well. And one thing to always check out here is to see this is for corner six and mortar six and mortise five. So here's mortise six and it's going to go in like this so that it's flush on the on the front side here. This is the face, that's the surface that we're looking at. So I look at that again and I see that my lines line up perfectly. I want to keep my my pencil lines if I have to. I'll just file down the edges of the tenon a little bit to get it fit perfectly. But that side's done and now we have the other side. So that looks right for number six. I'll check it also for number five. So my arrow's up, so it's gonna be sitting in here like this, and those lines look good as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and make these, finish these cuts, and then we'll, ch we'll check this for fit. I don't have any like backer board here to like prevent marring. There's a couple reasons why. Number one is, uh, Mitch is working with oak. Oak's a very hard wood. Oak is going to be, uh-oh. 
here comes my, my helper. Okay, the hardwood, it's not gonna dent very easily, and, uh, and that's gonna be good for us. <laughs> um, if I was using pine, which is a softwood, it's very possible that I would do is just take a small little block and set it underneath the foot here so that it, uh, it holds it down without denting the material, okay? Hey, little buddy. Hi. Welcome to Mr. Heck's neighborhood. Hey, howdy ho, neighbor. Hey, Valerie, you're bringing over a hanger for me? No. Why do you have a hanger in your hands? Well, I was going to actually help him with school stuff after you're done. All right, let's finish this video. You want to see this? Yeah. All right. So, Oliver, I'm just cutting off the, the shoulders for this, chen, for this uh, tenon here. So, I'm going to be going in and holding it again, flush cut. Same thing here. Okay. So now we have all four cut. So I'm going to go ahead and now I'm going to cut these straight down. This I could also do on a bandsaw. But I, I enjoy having the music on and cutting by hand. I'm going to leave my lines. I can always go ahead and... Always go ahead and clean them up at a later time. If the lines mean that it's too wide, by leaving them, it's a non-issue. So I can tell already that that one there is going to be a little bit wide. I'm going to grab the chisel and just kind of clean that side up there. Okay. The other thing is, <clears throat> to make sure the tenon goes in nicely, we can go ahead and just put a little bit of its edge on it. So the chamfer on the ends of the tenon and also on the sides. Just a little bit to make sure it slides in there nicely so we're not fighting it to go in. Okay, let's take a look and see how that fit is. So this is number six, and here's number six. So it feels a little bit tight top to bottom. I'm gonna just take a hair off of that. I'm going to do that with a final. Hardly saw any sawdust go off there. I want this to be a nice friction fit. It goes in and fits tight against the side. So it seems pretty good. One thing I, I notice is that my apron sits a little bit high on the top there. So I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit off the bottom of the tenon just so I can scoot that down just a hair. But in terms of the fit, It's, it's snug. I can, I can, I'll be able to sand that a little bit and get that <clears throat> just how we want it to be. So I'm going to take a little bit off the bottom of the tenon, and I'll say this one's done. I have it labeled with sides up with the arrow. So I'll take a little bit off the bottom of the tenon here. See how that looks. Pretty good. You can see what that, that fit in the corner there looks like. Uh, I don't have a clamp or anything on that. I just pushed it in by hand. But that's 
you don't want to rely on a clamp to, to finish that for you. So that seems pretty good to us, okay? Next one is the other side of the tenon, other side of the apron here. Now with these cuts. So again, I'll put it in my vise. And I like to have the, the table and the vise at a height here where I'm not arching over uh, to make the cuts. into our five. So number five mortise is over here. And again, I have an arrow for which side is up. I'll put that one in. That one fits much more loosely, but not bad. It's got a friction fit. And we'll be able to glue that in there then. Okay. So we have this side done as well. Okay. So... <clears throat> I'll probably sand a little bit of the inside of the, the, the uh, face of the tenon off here and uh, to try to give it a better fit or I might just take a little bit more off of the bottom of the tenon to get that to fit a little bit, a little bit easier. But we have on this table here, we have three of these, All right? I'm gonna do a small sketch here of what's going on with this. So we have, Mitch has two front legs And we have aprons that come off flush. Let me fix this up. Mitch has aprons that come off. And then we have another leg down here. Comes over, have our apron here, and then we have another leg. Apron fits on there, leg comes down, apron comes down, comes over, our leg goes to there. <clears throat> then we have the apron in the back, and the apron comes down at the same level there. I'm sorry, let's make that inside of that leg. So this comes into the side here, and that comes to it. So we have one, two, three aprons. In the front, we're just going to have two rails that go across, and that's going to allow for us to have our drawer in there. So what we want to do at this stage here is we want to get one, two, and three all fitting well into those legs. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to make the joinery to put over the top and bottom of the drawer here, and that's going to be hand cut as well. One's going to be a dovetail at the top, and the bottom is going to be a, uh, a mortise and tenon right there. So I'll do that on my on my uh, mortising machine. So at this stage, I'm going to get all three fitting well, and we'll be able to stand that up with nothing in the middle there. And then I'll be able to lay out for the for the center part. 